What's going on, Vinyl community? Welcome to another video with the Record Spinner. Bit of a different setting, uh, not what you're used to seeing with me behind my Cubes of Records. That is because today I am doing my very first record store vlog. Um, before I get into this video, kind of want to do a little bit of a housekeeping of sorts with all my fellow subscribers and viewers. Um, I'm sure I may have mentioned it in a previous video or somewhere on social media um, that I started working for Books A Million in July. I left FYE after great uh, two years um, and I was working basically just a few steps up from where I was at FYE to where the Books A Million location was within my local mall. And I was there since July, and it wasn't until about, I would say, two weeks ago as of filming this uh, that my district manager made me an offer that I didn't want to really pass you know, on, um, basically to move to a location that is about 30 minutes from where I live, um, a much bigger store, I must say, because the one that I was working at in July up to middle of November... Uh, was 2,000 square feet, and that is nothing compared to the size of the store that I'm in now, which is much larger, more departments, more selection. There's even a vinyl section, which is pretty sweet, I must say. Good prices and a very good selection overall, and there's rumors that it's going to be expanding. We shall see. Um, and one of the plus sides of working in a new location, which is 30 minutes from where I live, um, is that I am near the mall where a local record store is at that I try to go to as often as I can. It's called The Rock Shop. If you have been following my channel, I did film a video there this past summer, and it turned out very, very well. And that's one of the plus sides. I get to go there more because, like I said, half hour away, and with my work schedule, along with my personal social life, I try to uh, come there as much as I can, and now I am able to do so even more. And they were very pleased with how the uh, video turned out that I filmed at their store back in the summer, that they are allowing me to film these kind of vlogs, which is why I am doing the first of perhaps many here on this channel. Uh, so, as of filming today, um, it is Black Friday, and it is the... The start of the holiday madness that comes upon us and it's just going to be absolutely crazy uh, but for us record lovers it is record store day black friday and there are a couple of releases uh, that i really hope that my record store got um i'm a little late to the party because as of filming now it is 12 o'clock in the afternoon and the mall has been open since uh 6 a.m so fingers crossed that for some reason, the releases that I want are still there, but let's find out, shall we? Alright, so unfortunately they did not have the three main titles that I was looking for, but they had one that kind of crossed my mind, and I'm definitely going to snag a copy. What exactly is it? Find out at the end of the video.
Alright guys, I'm in a predicament. Kiss, Maiden. Kiss, Maiden. I don't know which one to get. I really don't know. This is really tough. I'm not sure. Well, this would look great in the boudoir. So the one cool thing, like I mentioned on my record store video from the summer, is that the rock shop does sell local talent. And usually when I swing by this section, I just double check, see what's around here. And we'll just put this guy up front there. It's actually my first album that I did back in 2016. If you want to check it out, the Bandcamp link is in the description box. I think I'm ready. Guys, this is Brian. Many thanks to him for always having me film these little clips and do my thing and also for supplying South Jersey with the best indie record shop around the area. Awesome, awesome. All right, so I just got in the car, um, left the record store. I'm about to head to work, but before I do so, I wanna showcase to you what I picked up today. Now, they did not have the main record store day releases that I was looking for. Uh, there was two that they never received, and then there was one that they had two copies of, but they were gone by the time I got there. So that's kind of the price I had to pay for coming at a later time than 6 a.m., but it's not the end of the world because let's hope that the eBay and Discogs prices are not gonna be as astronomical as some record store day releases are. But that did not mean that I was gonna leave empty-handed. I figured I'd take it upon myself to uh, treat myself to a little pre-Christmas gift and I'm gonna showcase it to you right now. So there was one um, record store day release that I did pick up that kind of glanced over me when the list was first announced. And when I saw it, they had a good amount of copies and I'm just like, you know what, why not? You know, the songs are good and I, of course I dig the artist, so why not? So I picked up the 7-inch uh, from Paul McCartney. This is I Don't Know and Come On To Me. These are two tracks off of his latest album, Egypt Station, which came out this year. Uh, these were the first two tracks to drop when the album was announced. And just a really cool release to own. Uh, this is actually limited. Um, there's the numbering right there in the corner. I'm not sure if this was handwritten. It's really hard to determine, but this is limited to 5,600 copies, and I have copy number 1,904. So that's pretty cool to own, and yeah, I left with something from today. And now we're gonna get into some of the stuff that they already had in their inventory that I just decided to pick up uh, today and just for the sake of it to fill it in my collection. Uh, the first one I'm gonna showcase is one that's been there quite recently. I haven't seen it before and I was waiting on today to pick it up. Uh, plus, cause also today's payday and of course, you see where my paycheck goes. But anyways, uh, I picked up this album. This is the Beach Boys Friends. Uh, this is one of their more kind of mellower albums. This came out in 1968, and this was kind of when uh, they were trying to find their feet in the changing climate of the late 60s. And this album like really tanked in the charts. It did not get a, um, a wide appeal upon release, but there are some decent tracks on here. You have things like Diamond Head, Busy Doing Nothing, uh, Wake the World, which is a really great uh, song, and the title track is the standout on this. Uh, this is a recent reissue that was done in 2014. Um, great condition. Um, the vinyl is pretty much mint, and I got it for like, it was like 18 bucks, which is not too bad, uh, considering that the um, this reissue, I think on Amazon it's like 25 bucks and I don't really want to pay that for a bit of an obscure Beach Boys album but I was willing to forego it at this price so very glad to own that and last but not least um as you saw, I was debating between the Kiss album and the Iron Maiden album. I remembered that when I came here uh for I think it was like 
right around the time of my birthday, I got some uh, birthday money and I spent it on some records. And I remember I picked up Number of the Beast by Maiden. So I decided to do the wise thing and alternate my decision. And instead I went for the Kiss album, which I think in hindsight, I think I made the right choice because this album is a personal favorite of mine. Uh, this is Carnival of Souls, The Final Sessions. Uh, basically, after they did the Unplugged uh, show and they reunited with Ace and Peter there, um, they went in the studio and started work on this album with Eric Singer and Bruce Kulick, who were already in the band. And this album is essentially Kiss trying to go grunge. They were trying to fit in with the musical climate that was going on in the mid-90s, and this was their attempt at it. And yeah, it's not the traditional Kiss sound that everyone knows them for, but this is a pretty damn good job at trying to recreate the feel of the grunge sound and them just trying to fit in with it. Um, it would have been interesting to see what direction they would have continued to go in if this album had come out when it did because they started work in like the like late 95 into early 96 and keep in mind the reunion pretty much was announced in like March or April of 96 so very very close in terms of timeline uh, so this album pretty much uh, sat on a shelf and bootlegs were starting to come out around that time and then the label um Universal, Mercury, whatever, decided to seize all that and just release it as is in the, I think it was late 1997 when this came out. Uh, this is a first time uh, vinyl pressing of this album. Uh, this is a reissue that came out in 2014 with the rest of the KISS catalog, and I'm very glad to finally own it. I don't know why I held off on picking this album, uh, but it surely does fill a hole in my KISS collection, so I'm very proud to own it. So that right there is what I picked up today on Record Store Day, Black Friday. Um, many thanks to the staff over at the Rock Shop in Mays Landing, New Jersey for having me film my videos and allowing me to still film. Um, they're really great guys, and if you're around South Jersey, be sure to check them out. And to all those out there that went out to Record Store Day Black Friday this year, I hope your experiences were excellent and you're able to pick up whatever you wanted to find or whatever you came across. And if you enjoyed this video slash vlog, be sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Uh, this is the first of hopefully many Record Store vlogs because now that I'm able to visit the shop more, I'll do some more filming and I'll upload that footage here on the channel. See you guys in the next video, and most importantly, keep the record spinning.